Николай спрашивает. Николас asks, Hello, I am in search of my God. Four years ago, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. For the first time in my life, I felt helpless. Now my parents are deceased, my grandparents too, even my godfather died. Recently I began expressing interest in the origins of Christianity, etc. And what I started to find out gave me reasons to think. I started suspecting that I am praying to the wrong God. I tried to stop praying and straight away on the following day things got significantly worse. My health got worse. My question is, is there a quick way to find one's own God? This is a multi-sided question we receive from our colleague, with quite a heartache behind it. But we can easily understand a person that is searching for the cause. And the mechanism for finding this cause does matter. It matters. Finding your own God, colleagues, we often come across this issue, almost at every lesson, always ending up by at least reminding ourselves of the fact that this illusion of having one and only God for all is just an illusion. And it is truly so that every human has his own God, the one who projected himself into this physical plane, and you were born. With abridged knowledge, possibly with abridged memory, possibly with a very specific, certain task, technical task, for this incarnation, still remaining this God's projection, like a thought that did arise in his mind. And this thought is as if an objective, to achieve something, to discover something, to understand something. Just like your thoughts create the reality around you, you are a physically independent, intelligent unit connected to your force. Was this evil intent or the functioning of the program? Or was it a provocation that people forgot their gods, forgot their ancestors, turned to a deity that has nothing to do with them? and started believing in the existence of one and only God, called themselves his servants, started believing in a savior that will save them from a very dubious punishment, completely unfounded, but yet prescribed. All of this is possible, and we will surely figure out what it was, but we will do so a little later when all of this will be over, when the pressure of this Abrahamic project stops being dominant in each and everyone's consciousness. But you, the ones who came to magic, knowingly, or by the will of destiny, or led by curiosity, you still accompanied by some fear as to what is this and how would it turn out, nonetheless, you may already ask yourself these questions. Whereas there are people who are still incapable of facing even the slightest attempt of questioning themselves about the failure of this Christian religion that forces itself upon them. And ask whether it is really as described in the books of Abrahamic content. When a person asks himself this question for the first time, throwbacks start happening in that very instant. Why? Because the Judaic matrix is still very strongly engraved within the consciousness. It encompasses practically all sectors of life, occupies all matrix levels, the inner personal matrix of reasonableness. This is why this throwback occurs, hitting where the thinning is, where you are most vulnerable. What is the most precious to you?
what you have open to the surrounding reality and completely unprotected. As a rule, it is love. The love towards the ones close to you, towards your children, your parents. Where it is thin, there it tears, as people say. And that's what happens. As for example, in this story we receive from our colleague Nicholas. The mere thought on the topic caused his health to be targeted. He received a threat that once manifested itself in the form of a mother's illness. And certainly, very few are capable of resisting such strikes. But those who can start progressively covering from the influence of the Abrahamic system all significant areas of their consciousness, all significant sections of their values. The matrix starts being written anew. And as the Abrahamic project is running out of time, it respectively starts occupying less and less space within the consciousness and affects less and less life areas. But this takes time, time and willpower. It takes incredible work upon oneself, upon one's way of acquiring knowledge about this world, and there are only few, of course, who make it to the end. There are many stories of this kind, and our colleagues tell us the experienced repercussions at the moment the very first idea of leaving and debaptizing would appear. Leaving this religion and clearing all your debts with it. Some have it easy, but it happens quite rarely. Usually, that does not just happen in an easy way, but rather that the effect is being postponed. As if everything is okay for now, no hits are coming from anywhere, no buttoning is taking place, no one is claiming anything. But after some time, when consciousness seems to be relaxed, when it is convinced of being free, the system anyway finds thin, vulnerable slits in the mind through which it manages to creep in like mistletoe. And if a debt exists, if no protection is present, if the person is not mastering his will and mindset every single minute, then what is called a blowback happens, a revenge, a desecration, a reproval. And it is different for every tradition. It is quite painful, but as you understand, inevitable. Each person has been, one way or another, tied to Christianity for some part of his lifetime. The fact that you've been baptized without being asked makes no difference from the point of view of this system. Parents give their child over to godparents, meaning that other parents are being appointed. And in turn, according to this very right of possession, they give this child over in servitude to the Judaic God. So what do you want to claim here? You can't demand anything from no one. In some Christian systems there is, not quite a second baptism, but rather a reaffirmation of it. It is called the confirmation in Catholicism. When an already grown-up child has to confirm his affiliation. And the Orthodox Church also has similar rituals. But religion never unveils the meaning of these rituals. It never does. This is why it surely becomes difficult. And here our colleagues ask if there is a way to quickly find your God. Probably. There probably is one. But maybe something different is needed here. A different way of perceiving. And firstly, there should be no fear of Abrahamism. And all of the pain it inflicts has to be insignificant compared to the true happiness you are seeking, which is becoming one with yourself. How fast this will happen 
depends on many factors, on one's own willpower, on the amount of fears you have in relation to the system, on how deeply the Abrahamic matrix penetrated your consciousness, on the amount of debts you owe. And what are these debts? It is when you beg this God for some kind of favor or mercy and give nothing in return. Only a foolish human consciousness will think that things should be this way a priori. But in reality it is not like that. Everything has its price. Religions, which exist and live on the Gregorial plane, on the level of the consciousness's buddhic body, nourish themselves by consuming time, the factor that forms the causal plane. Events, time, forces that one invests in these events, the time that is invested in such events, this is the currency it gets paid back with. It demands a lot of time for itself. It once created an event for you using a certain amount of energy, and will demand in return an amount of time that exceeds it manifold. Because this is the algorithm they have. This algorithm is also described in their book, the book they base themselves on, the Old and the New Testament, respectively. But what Christian ever reads it? And even if he does read it, who reads it as an instruction for operating this reality? Very few. Therefore, colleague Nicholas, I will probably tell you that there is no quick universal method of fighting one's own God, but one, working, working on yourself, on your reality, on your thoughts, on your willpower. There are many methods. During each of our lessons in our school, we provide different ones. Various ways approaching this issue, so to say, from different aspects, different magical points of view. All of them are based precisely on finding your personal connection, establishing a contact with your force that will lead you to the path of your magical transformation so that you will no longer need any teachers, any school, any instructions or advice, because you are your own teacher, school, instructor and advice, because you possess this very connection. And when this happens, then probably in that very moment you can say, yes, you did connect with your force and it really came into being. If it is not the case yet, this means you have to search. And in this search, all methods are good. No matter how much work and how much time this will take. This will be my answer to you.